few months ago now, I sent off an email, private email, to Pete Evans. As you can see here, inquiries, Pete Evans. And it was sent to him. And the message I sent, Hi Pete, I just listened to a podcast with you and Max Egan. Now Rich Mate has advised you that Ad advise that you and Max are members of the Nightcap community and AB as well. Tell me, why haven't you told anyone you have encouraged into the Nightcap community that it is belly up? The council has rejected roads and will not allow any development applications ever. And 3222 Kyogle Road the receiver advised that the purchaser did not complete the sale. For a further $100,000 deposit of others' money, settlement date is extended to the 19th of October 2020, at which time who is going to pay $2 million for land that can't, can't be developed or built on? I asked Max to tell people in a video, and he lied and made up stuff. I would hope you have more honour than him. How much have you paid into land that you can never use or build on? Ever. Lyshout's wife isn't mayor anymore. It will never happen. P.S. Don't get that toxic, hateful man, which I'm talking about, Max Egan, <laughs> back on your show again. Seriously, he turns your listeners' stomach, stomachs with all his hate he spits out and the anger in which he says it. You are better than that. Cheers, Kerry. So I sent that to Pete Evans, private email. And then I was about a week later, I got this attached to something. It came into my uh, message inbox and I had no idea what it related to. <laughs> I read it and it's like, what, what? And then it's like, oh, right. So Pete Evans forwarded on my message. He sent it to Derek Zillman at capital Z and CC'd it to AB and Rich Moat. And he said, hi, fellas, this just came in. So nothing I said to Pete Evans you know, I mean, I know that there's not much in between those ears, but, you know, in one ear and out the other, clearly, and straight on to Derek Zillman to actually, you know, handle it. And, well, I wondered why I got this email. I thought maybe he, he sent it to me by mistake, but, no, sent from my iPhone. I don't know how he did it. So then there's this sent from Derek Zillman to Billy Fitzgerald with it. But that's all there was that I got. So I sent a message to Derek Zillman and CC'd in PD Chef and AB and Richard, Knight, uh, Richard Mote. And I asked... Hello gentlemen, can any of you explain why I have received this email and why all you others are on it? Well, it's a good question because I send a personal email to Pete Evans and he's just completely ignored it and handed it on to someone else and I've got this email. So I'm asking him why have I got it? You clearly enjoyed my, my, my comments so much you shared it amongst yourselves. Wow, this account gets way too much random spam, so closing it down, folks. No need to answer a riddle. I won't be here. How did I get this email? Must have been fate. Just needed to confirm one more member, and now it is. So, thanks for that. Yeah, well, that was... Um, I was having... I've had problems with my computer and uh, yeah, there are certain things that have been glitching. I've been able to access them on and off and then not access them and and uh, yeah, my email account, I'm so over spam. I'm actually glad that I've got new accounts now. <laughs> I don't get anywhere near as much spam. 
because you know how you sign up for different things over the years so the mystery was solved today so uh, I've been packing up the boxes you know ready to move and everything and my daughter's been giving me a hand too she's been getting rid of a lot of stuff that really don't want to take with me when I move so um, she's been selling it on um, yeah online on the internet she's <laughs> she's a gem my daughter <laughs> I gave up worrying a long time ago about getting too attached to any one place you know I was just thinking that what in, in 36 years since I left home yeah over 80 different addresses I've long accepted the fact I've got gypsy feet <laughs> so yeah it's it's kind of like always a new adventure when you move anyway so yeah I might go quiet for a few days because I've got other things to do <laughs> move things from one place to another but later on this evening when I did open up the envelope and I looked in there it was like hmm now I'm beginning to understand a few of these other things uh, what was it that was in the envelope well finally Billy finally after how many months I got some fan mail from you something that I can read hang on now I have to tell you Billy I'm a little bit confused about the date on this letter it says the 10th of July 2020 and yet down here you make reference to it as the 30th of September email now 2020 so I don't know uh, 20th of July I wasn't even doing anything on nightcap then or Adrian Brennock in fact I'd only just uploaded my first videos and I hadn't even got my little um, little microphone thing here that I'm talking through I didn't buy that until ooh, uh, I think it was August when I did my first ever recording first ever Now, going down further into here, where Billy starts off by saying, we act on behalf of NCV Enterprises Proprietary Limited, Nightcap Village. Our client has provided us with a copy of your email dated 30th of September 2020 to Mr. Pete Evans, copy enclosed for ease of reference. By that email, you make the following false and misleading comments. 1. Nightcap community dot 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 is belly up. I, I noticed that how these have all got dot dots in them and taken out of context, even though, well, I'll deal with that. <laughs> 2. The council dot 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 will not allow any development applications ever. Three, the receiver advised that the purchaser did not complete the sale. Who is going to pay two million for land that can't be developed or built on? Good question, mate. Have you got a good answer? Uh, four, Lyshout's wife isn't mayor anymore. True. It will never happen. True. She's never going to be mayor again. <laughs> so that's a true statement. Uh, now this one here hang on I'll just um, oops. now regarding comment 1 and 2 or points 1 and 2 where he says it's false and mis misleading the actual fact that you quoted it out of context is false and misleading Mr. Billy <laughs> okay because the whole statement was tell me why haven't you told anyone you have encouraged into the nightcap community that it's belly up the council has rejected roads and will not allow any development applications ever right first of all where 
is any DA application. And I have actually seen communications where the council have stated they will not give development approval. It is as simple as that. So it's not false and misleading to state a fact that the council can easily verify. And there are many reasons why uh, that uh, application is not going to go forward ever. Many reasons. Discuss that in other videos. And all right, so the next point three that you actually said that the receiver advised. Now, I don't know why you even pulled that out and said anything simply for the fact that you actually agreed. The receiver did advise that the purchaser did not complete the sale. That was by the due date. And again, that was taken out of context because there was more explanation as to the context of that statement. And that context of the statement, uh, you actually agree when you, when you point out your little points down here. And on Leishout's wife isn't mayor anymore, it will never happen. Again, these are true statements. Each of those statements is false and misleading and we will deal with each in turn. Well, thank you, Billy. <laughs> Our client is gravely concerned that you know these statements to be false. All right, your client, whoever they are, um, that's their imagination that they are putting words into my mouth. I am not making statements that I believe to be false. I ask questions and I do put forward my opinion. Uh, very few things have I stated as fact and those things that I have stated as fact are actually backed up by everything. Like, if you cannot build on the land that you have actually got, belly up. Well, you know, maybe that's the wrong term to use because saying it's belly up implies that it had a belly in the first place, that it actually had some substance to it. it was probably the p poor terminology, but the gist of it meaning that, you know, you can't do anything with it. Everybody's buying in, believing that they can have uh, co-occupancy rights and it can never be developed. Now, you can take me to court. Your client can sue me as much as he wants over that because it's not going to change the facts. Neither will your uh, statements. So, our client is not belly up, by which we understand to imply that he is insolvent or in external administration. Well, the thing is, you know, implying I made a very clear statement that it's belly up because they can't get the roads approved, which is part of stage one, and they can't put in any further development applications. So yeah, it is belly up. How are you going to proceed and build houses on somewhere where, you know, you can't? So yeah, as I said, maybe I could have, you know, at uh, this point here, the council will not allow any de appli development applications ever. This is utterly incorrect. Actually, your statement in this letter is absolutely incorrect. I defy you to produce a current DA. I defy you to prove <laughs> that anything that I've said is actually incorrect. And considering that your client just received before Christmas two notices from council to actually cease illegal works there. They've stripped bare the whole hill. They've even taken it down past the easement for right next to the river. Your client's got a lot more to worry about. And Billy, before you go doing too much for them, you should get a great big fat retainer off them. 
you should get in and get some money before there isn't any left. You know? <laughs> oh, does that imply that your clients are insolvent or in external administration? No, that's not implying that. Because I wouldn't imply it. I'd state it as a matter of fact because I've looked it up on an ATSIC search and it says it. So no, I think we'd be quite clear on that fact. So yes, he finishes over here saying that it's not unusual to have protracted consultation with applicants, between applicants and council. Um, and it's not unusual that the council experience constant illegal activities that they have to serve notice to these people on this land to cease and stop doing illegal earthworks and other works. I, I've, I mean, it's just disgusting what they've bared up, that whole hill all the way down to the river. Disgusting. And there are environmental laws that I dare say that the council are looking into enforcing in that area too because you cannot clear away right down to the riverfront and you can't even clear all that land without the approval from council which you do not have so I tell you what Billy why don't you take that add that to your list of all the things that you reckon that I've got wrong and yeah let's deal with it where your client wants to deal with it I've been waiting for the invitation You're a bit slow though it's taken how many and these letters that have taken what? One's dated the 10th of July, one's dated the 12th of November, that actually makes reference to something on the 6th of October. I'm still trying to figure out all what you, your course of things. Then there's one here on the 25th of November, which you apparently claimed was hand-delivered to me. Um, that is a bit wrong on the date mate what's the date today oh it's the 19th now but it was the 18th yesterday sorry I didn't get to it earlier I was busy yeah my daughter came around and she wanted to pack all the stuff up and organize it and yeah so yeah priorities and that's why I'm not going to go too much into much more on the other letters I'll do you a response to those when I've got time uh, but here he says an extension on the settlement date was agreed again this is not unusual so again how was my statement which he did take out of context and in full context of putting it um, well hang on again I'll read it and 3222 Kyogle Road, the receiver advised that the purchaser did not complete the sale. This was true. I've actually got um, written confirmation of that. Uh, for a further $100,000 deposit of others' money, settlement date is extended to the 19th of October 2020. At which time, who is going to pay $2 million for land that can't be built on... Uh, can't be developed or built on so that's how he the receiver advised dot 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 who is going to pay two million well first of all Billy that is a question who is going to pay two million uh, would you like to answer it so I'm not saying who is <laughs> I'm asking and yes, you confirmed an extension was given. So again, not false or misleading, and it's a true statement. Again, uh, he says here, we would caution you to obtain legal advice as to the defamatory content of this statement. One possible, one possible imputation from this statement is that Joan Van Lyshout is corrupt and we where she and were she mayor but all other things being equal the development approval would be obtained 
Well, the thing is that that's your statement, mate. You said one possible, and it's certainly not my statement. My statement was, Lyshout's wife isn't mayor anymore. True, it will never happen again. True, she's too old. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Joan. <laughs> no insult meant to you, but hey, you know. <laughs> well, I suppose people can be all ages when they get into politics, can't they? Even at local level. Now, this last one, you know, I am just so over people saying stuff that, like, here he goes that we trust you will be aware of the judgment. All right. Look, I am aware of lots of different judgments, but none of them are for me. Then, you know, the thing being too that they're accusing me of working with Gillian Norman and that because they are accusing me of working with Gillian Norman they can then say that I am breaching an injunction that is against somebody else. Now let me state this quite clearly for you Billy Fitzgerald and Adrian Brennock and all of you at Nightcap Village. I am not working with Gillian Norman. Okay? Now, have you got that through your thick head? So, oh, on one of the other letters that I am not going to go into here because, yeah, I've got to get some sleep. I've got more stuff to get done tomorrow. There's someone coming around to get some more things that, yeah, my daughter's, uh, she's Jim. So anyway, uh, I'm only going to deal with this one and uh, after I've moved everything I'll uh, get into the other couple of letters and deal with them because, you know, uh, pff, sorry, yeah. Now the thing being that because I do not have anything to do with Julia Norman, and the fact that they've said that, well, investigations are ongoing because we believe it's true and, you know, we're going to prove it and it's going to be... Well, you can't prove something that isn't true, mate. It's just that simple. You're actually making false and defamatory statements in here or false and misleading. And, in fact, every one of them is based on the foundation that you think I'm working with her. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that any clearer. But then I tell you what, why don't we go to court and I'll swear on it, eh? Yeah. Because I'm not working with her, okay? I have actually, I've got to say a big thank you to all the people that I have been working with. You know, the, they are a really great bunch of people. And not one of them is Gillian Norman. I can tell you that for a fact. The people I've been working with that have got me to where I am, giving me all the bits and pieces that they saved over the years, yep. Yeah, little by little, it's all been pieced together. Now, I think, yeah, um, I did get a bunch of, was it Free Radical? Oh, New Radical? I don't know, something like that, sent me an email with some links to some documents that started me off. But most of those documents are actually, um, I found, were only starters anyway because where I would have only one, um, well, one appearance of the court date, I ended up with a lot more, a lot more cases and obtaining official proof and documentation and the official um, oh, I've got a massive file if you haven't seen on my new Facebook profile um, the massive amount of court cases that I've actually looked into surrounding all the members of NICAP on Minjimble. Yes I started on Julia Norman because 
that was where all the information was in the judgment. And once I read through that, I then went and looked at other ones where she is actually suing um, Rothwell Wall. And one interesting thing he, he, note, he made note of here, uh, which I didn't know, so thanks for telling me, was uh, on the one that the letter dated the 25th of November that is claimed to have been hand-delivered on the 18th of January. That's a little bit outdated, don't you think, mate? Because the, the deadline you give me on this letter, oh, there is no deadline. You've actually told me that we, uh, you're taking legal action. Well, good. About bloody time, eh? You've been dragging your heels. Let's get all this stuff out in court. Because um, I've been uh, getting it all together. I've got plenty of uh, stuff that, uh, well... None of it's come from Julian Norman. 99% of it has actually come off the internet, public information, searchable, and the other 1% has been from all those people out there that have so wonderfully sent me stuff, like receiving a court transcript and reading Adrian Brannock's court testimony in the Wollumbin liquidation trial. That was very interesting. A lot of inconsistencies in your client's um, testimony. And again, these are all things that I will be very happy to bring out in court because whilst Mark Darwin didn't appear in court, he's got plenty of videos to actually counter what Adrian Brannock actually testified to in court as truthful. It wasn't quite like a, being only a consultant for Freedom Summits and Truthology. Wow. That's just like only being in marketing right now, isn't it? As a developer of a $36 million project. Well, I wonder. So, it seems like Billy Fitzgerald has been quite a fan. And I think I've given him, well, more attention than he deserves right now. <laughs> and considering that all the deadlines you've given me are past due, do what you got to do, Billy. But I'll tell you this one thing. Get your money up front. Oh, yeah, you might have lots of ambition that you're actually representing their truthful statement. But just because someone goes to court once over something that, well, um, that injunction doesn't even apply to me. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got nothing to do with anybody except Gillian Norman. And if you think I'm working for her, well, go ahead and prove it. If you want to waste all your time doing that, sure. But by the time you've figured out that you've actually got no legs to stand on because you can't prove anything, you can't prove what I'm not doing, okay? It's that simple. I'm not working with Gillian Norman and I'm not aiding her cause. So actually, if I give a quick glance to your other letters and I take out all the fact of all the accusations that you make on the foundation that you're making all these assumptions that I'm working with Gillian Norman. I'm not. And I don't know how much more clearly to state that. But I am more than happy to bring everything that I've got to court, bring it all out. Now, one thing I would ask you, Billy, uh, you're saying that I'm making all these defamatory statements and everything, but other than those four particular items that, that we've just dealt with, oh, well, wow, that's got 6th of October on it. That's actually... <laughs> 
can't even get the same date on the same page. So that's where the 6th of October has come from. Didn't notice that. Well, I've got other things on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> you ought to see my lounge room. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not very tidy. I do notice, Billy, on the letter of the 12th of November that you state there that you enclosed with that letter was a copy of the injunction. Well, there was no copy that you sent me in this, mate. Sorry. But even if you did, I wouldn't be interested because it's got absolutely nothing to do with me. Will you get that through your thick head, mate? You can't plaster somebody else's judgment onto everybody else or anybody else just because you think so. And I think you should know that you need something called proof for that. And <laughs> good luck finding that, eh? Go on, wait. How many more months will you waste? As I tell you what, by the time you've figured that one out, well, as I said, I'm packing up my boxes to get rid of all my stuff, so um, I'm moving things from one place to another. And, uh, well, I'm glad you got in in time so that at least some things can make sense, but 26th of November, oh, 25th of November, sorry, that... Despite requests you have failed to because of the letters dated the 6th of October and the 12th of November. So all this stuff I just received today. Despite the requests you have failed to respond to the letters, provide the undertakings requested, cease and desist from causing damage to MCV's business interests, principally through the Crystalline Geometry YouTube channel. And four, cease and desist from defaming Mr. Brennock. Uh, Mr. Brennock has reason to believe that you are facilitating Miss Gillian G. I. Linda Norman. Breach the terms of injunctions. Well, I don't care what Mr. Brennock believes. It's what Mr. Brennock can actually prove. Now, I can prove that Mr. Brennock is a bankrupt. I can prove he's been advertising himself as a developer. I can prove he has financial interests. I can prove his share in Nyepi was moved at the time of his bankruptcy. I can prove that Nyepi owns shares in other companies, all nightcap on Minjimbo Associated. I can prove lots of things. In fact, there were a few other things. Hang on. And I can also prove that his bankruptcy trustee is doing the right thing and investigating your client's activities. So I would be more worried about what may come of that and what legal representation your clients may need once they are dealing with all of his activities through there and the bankruptcy trustee who is also communicating with the ATO Adrian Brannock's creditor and asking whether they want to fund more investigations now whether they do fund more investigations or not well you know how the tax office are they they don't like to let anyone get away with it even if it takes them 20 years, which I think one case took them 19 years, didn't it? Is that you know that you made these false statements, that publication to Mr Evans. Now, I don't know about you, but publication actually will do a little bit of belly here. You know, that to me implies public, you know, publication. It's not a publication, dickwit. It's a communication, okay? I communicated via a private email. And no, not with the sole intention of causing damage to our client's business. 
with the sole intention of hoping that Mr. Evans might actually, you know, activate some of that grey matter in between his ears and actually see what his promotion is doing to other people. You know, the world doesn't revolve around all you boys at nightcap. There are innocent people that have got hurt. And there will be more. You know, it's not lost on me that there's probably another fresh batch of investors that are waiting to become past lost investors. So in the interests of poor Mr. Pete Evans that was so devastated by receiving that email, I'm just wondering how many people that said worse things in comments on Facebook about him, how many of you actually received a letter from Billy Fitzgerald? And seriously, Billy, it, you know, how do you expect anyone to take you seriously when you call yourself Billy? William is professional. Bill or William. But Billy? That's a little boy's name. You know, <laughs> it's not very professional. Most professionals I see actually use their full name. They don't actually use abbreviations, slang, nicknames or anything like that. They are professionals, William. Then again, you might have been called Bill. I don't know. I don't really care that too much about that. So, my response to you, uh, Billy, is basically everything that you've said that is false and misleading is actually not. And I welcome the opportunity where your client actually thinks that he can, well, I know that uh, you've also been linked in on all the communications with the bankruptcy trustee, the liquidator too. See, the liquidator's doing the right thing. Bankruptcy trustee's doing the right thing. You're the only one that hasn't wised up yet. You know, you are just heading for a fall, mate. When you are actually not seeing what's right in front of you, that's when shit happens and, you know, how many failures have you had, Billy? Hmm? Because I've been waiting for this. Oh, damn, though. You know, you could have got here a little bit sooner. You know, I could have not answered the door today, but I thought, nah. I've been waiting for you. And I've been waiting, and I've been waiting, and I've been waiting. Then my daughter came round, and uh, it's sorting through all the boxes and packing them up and wrapping stuff and, yeah, moving stuff. She's taking stuff to her place so that she can sell it all to, so don't even have to move it again. <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good, actually, that I can understand why gypsies actually had a wagon that they could roll around with them so they didn't have to actually pack up and move everything every time they just moved to a different location in their little gypsy wagon yeah well that that was a dream of mine not a wagon but um yeah sort of like a mobile home type thing where you can just cruise around <laughs> but anyway but he says in his letter that the reasons already articulated what of the letters that I've just received today that seriously there's more talk in there about Gillian Norman and what's applying to her than me. I mean, you know, look, I don't mind copping shit from my own mouth and what I do. But if you're going to make accusations, if you're going to make comments, you better not make them false and misleading. Because I am not facilitating Gillian Norman. Okay? I'm not even talking to her. <sighs> but hey, it's, as long as you think that, you're going to waste your time on it, aren't you? But seriously, can you write me a letter 
that actually doesn't have anything to do with her and her injunction. Can you make this about me? I'm sorry to be a little bit egotistical here. But, you know, this is all my work here. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to share the credit with her. You know, I'm sorry to say it, but she actually stuffed up her end of it. I'm, you know, uh, I don't intend to do the same thing. Because uh, I haven't actually said the same things that she said. I haven't said uh, anything of what she's said. And the things that I have said, I've been trying to do research and figure things out, ask questions, and then uh, ponder some conclusions. And when, yeah, well, I've had to change direction a few times because things have turned out to not be, well, not quite the right information, not the quite piecing it together. You've got to look somewhere else for it. Because you know what? Your clients aren't very cooperative. They won't talk to anybody and anybody that speaks out against them. Yeah, this is what you get. And this was just Pete Evans. And this has just rolled on from what now? There's three letters. I still want to know how you hand delivered me something on the 26th, sorry, 25th of November. When it's, I've only just received them today. But I suppose that's all part of your false and misleading information, isn't it, Billy? Hmm? There's, uh... Well, I've got three letters. One says, we'll give you a chance. The other one says, we'll give you another chance. And the other one says, we'll give you no chance at all. Well, I'll tell you, what can I say? You've already made up your mind before I even got the document, so <laughs> there's not much I can talk about it. But you better hurry with that summons, boy, because, um, yeah, as I said, shifting stuff. You better hurry. Gypsy feet don't stay in one place for too long. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, just to remind people that I will not be... Uh, I've uh, got to uh, move things. It's going to take a little bit of reorganising everything. So uh, you probably won't hear from me for a couple of days. And when you do, I uh, should be on the other side of, yeah, resetting everything back up again in a, in a new place. <laughs> okay. On that note, I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Catch up.